hello students so as you know we are studying about the chapter alternating current so up to now we have studied some important parts of alternating current already like i have studied i have started with the definition of alternating current the meaning of it and how the alternating current generates where it generates and how we are using alternating current in our daily life and how it is different from the electric current means how alternating current stood different from other currents okay so uh, so still today we have studied about some important characteristics of alternating current also like we have studied about period of alternating current frequency of alternating current instantaneous voltage and instantaneous current peak voltage and current mean value rms value phase of ac phase difference all the things we have studied which are very important for you to know about alternating current and also in the last class i have started with the new thing where i am joining this alternating current to the electric components like resistor inductor and capacitor so in the last class we have studied about resistive circuit resistive circuit means what an ac source and ac source is connected to a resistor so such a circuit which it forms like this like this it will be na this resistor is connected to ac source such circuit is called as what resistive circuit in the same way we have studied about one more electrical component which is called as a inductor with the inductance l and that component we have connected with the ac source and to this source we have called inductive circuit okay so in the last class we have studied the alternating source connected to a or alter or alternating voltage applied to a resistor we have studied alternating voltage applied to a inductor we have studied and now in today's class we are going to study about the third concept that is alternating voltage applied to a capacitor as i told you i am using three electric components here among that third one is capacitor you know about capacitor already as you are studying the electrical charge and the electrostatics chapter hmm? how it will be how its uh, uh, symbol will be it will be like this na two parallel plates will be there hmm? and it is having a capacitance c like our resistance resistor had a resistance r inductor had a, a inductance l like that capacitor has a capacitance c okay so in the inductor and in the resistive circuit we have discussed about what will be the relation between i and v here also what will be the relation between alternating current and alternating voltage so here in this inductive in this resistive circuit we said that there is no any phase difference between i and v in this resistive circuit okay but in this inductive circuit we got an phase difference of the angle pi by means we have got sin omega t and sin omega t minus pi by 2 like that so here here we got an phase difference okay so what happens when an capacitor which is containing the parallel plates is connected to a ac source 
that we are studying under this heading understood so this circuit is obviously called as what what it called as capacitive circuit as when resistor is connected to ac source we called it as a resistive circuit when conductor inductor is connected to a ac source we called it as a inductive circuit like that when a capacitor is connected to a ac source we call it as a capacitive circuit so now we have to study what will be the relation between i and v in this capacitive circuit okay so alternating source connected to a capacitor is is here alternating source is connected to a capacitor such a circuit in which alternating source is connected to a capacitor is called as a capacitive circuit and here this capacitor is charged and sometimes discharged charged means what charges are stored here sometime they are not there means periodically like we have a periodic wave na, for ac it is sometimes charged discharge charged discharge charge discharge like that the capacitor in this capacitive circuit is periodically charged and discharged hmm? so we are applying a alternating voltage to this capacitor and you already know what will be the alternating voltage applied to this capacitor that will be obviously v naught sin omega t the same we have done in the resistive circuit and inductive circuit also so here here in this circuit voltage is applied to this capacitor and that voltage i have considered as v is equal to v naught sin omega t so as here we are having a capacitor capacitor is nothing but one electrical component which stores charges so in this capacitor there there surely will be some charges na? so let q be the charges on the capacitor q be the charges on the capacitor and in the electrostatic chapter we ha you have studied already that the potential difference across the capacitor the potential difference across the capacitor vc can be written as q divided by c where vc is the potential difference across the capacitor q is the charge of the capacitor and c is the capacitance of the capacitor this you have studied in the second or third chapter already okay so now this vc is nothing but one electric potential na? it is nothing but what one electric potential so you can consider it also as only v you can consider it only v or also sometimes you can consider it as e so can we write v is equal to q by c okay v is equal to q by c so q by c is equal to what v okay so here you know the value of v here v naught sin omega t so what we can write q by c is equal to v naught sin omega t and what q will be that is v naught c sin omega t okay so now this is what this is our q so as you know while we are studying while we are comparing the value of alternating voltage and alternating current we will get what we will get one equation that is already known for us that is v is equal to v naught sin omega t but what all the derivations we are doing we make it to find i because once we got i that gives us equation number two so if we compare equation 1 and 2 we can easily give the relation between v and i so this is how you have to understand the reason behind every derivation if you understand that you can you can solve them you can remember them very easily not only in the ac not only in the current electricity i am telling in all the chapters of physics you can think of in chemistry also you will get some derivations right so you can you just think of why we are doing this derivation 
and you just remember some important parts of that if you remember how to start and if you remember how to end and between some important points it's very easy for you don't make a big headache about the derivations they are easy if you understand and they are much difficult if you start by hatting them okay so here in this derivation we have to find i so you got this much equation here so by this equation can you find i anyhow yes q is nothing but what charge is nothing but what rate of change of current with respect to time so can you write q is equal to di by dt isn't it current electricity okay so i oh sorry that is i is equal to dq by dt current is nothing but a rate of change of charge with respect to time we have studied it in the current electricity already so here i is equal to dq divided by dt and q is nothing but what v naught c sin omega t okay now you have to differentiate this you just have to differentiate this how so just remember this i hope you are writing down the expressions i is equal to dq by dt and differentiation of this q v not c sin omega t okay remember what was that i is equal to v not c sin omega t okay so what we got i is equal to d by dt of v not c sin omega t okay now differentiate differentiate this v naught and c are already constants hmm? and integration differentiation of sine cos omega t into omega so can you write it v naught c omega cos omega t okay so here for our convenience of the derivation i will just change some terms here how means it is already v naught c omega so is that make any change if i write v naught divided by 1 divided by c omega hmm? so it's like a is a is equal a divided by 1 by b so if you, this b come upside it comes like a b only na? like that it is already v naught c omega so this v naught keeping as it is c omega i am writing like 1 by c omega if it comes upside it will be the same so here v naught divided by 1 by c omega why you are taking like this you will understand further okay so cos omega t so as you know we are changing the cos with respect to sine because we want the i we want the equation number two in the form of sine that's why this i is equal to this much we got now this cos omega t we have to write in terms of sine omega t so how can you write cos cos omega t as sine omega t so can you write this as sine of omega t plus pi by 2 right this much trigonometric relations okay and this v naught 1 divided by c omega i am considering as i naught so what your expression becomes i is equal to i naught sine because cos omega t i am replacing by sine omega t plus pi by 2 sine omega t omega Huh, omega t plus pi by 2 okay so this is what our equation number 2 and as you know what was the equation number 1 it was v naught sine omega t now compare v is equal to v naught sine omega t was the equation 1 and i naught sine omega t plus pi by 2 is the equation 2 you have already written 2 you have already understood two concepts resistive circuit and inductive circuit so now you can think here is there any phase difference phase difference is there or not yes of course it is there what is this 
this is nothing but phase difference so in the capacitive circuit there occurs a phase difference with the phase angle pi by 2 positive pi by 2 in the inductive circuit also we got it but we got it as a in minus means it is it was in the downward direction reverse direction so it is in the upper direction okay so now you can you can conclude that here in this capacitive circuit what happens sin omega t and i is equal to i naught sin omega t plus pi by 2 in the inductive circuit it was minus pi by 2 that's why we told that current lags behind voltage and voltage is leading the current we studied we said this in the inductive circuit but in the capacitive circuit what happens capacitive circuit the current is a leading one current leads voltage by an angle pi by 2 or you can also say voltage lags behind current by pi by 2 both are same now so this is the conclusion we have got over here okay so one more one more shortcut i will tell you to remember who is lagging and who is leading in where so in the capacitive circuit this thing happened in the inductive circuit what happened in the inductive circuit v leads i by pi by 2 and i lags behind v by pi by 2 so this this uh, yeah, these are the what uh, important definitions or important conclusions we have to remember okay now this inductive circuit means i which is leading voltage voltage is also called as potential also na? voltage is sometimes called as potential also p l leads ipl in inductive circuit potential leads yes potential leads means whom whom does it will lead it will obviously lead current na? so in inductive circuit potential leads current so same in the capacitive circuit capacitive circuit in capacitive circuit current leads ccl hmm? in capacitive circuit current leads voltage yes so you remember these two ipl and ccl very very easier to under remember na very easier to remember ipl in inductive circuit potential leads current in capacitive circuit current leads voltage or potential hmm? and by what by which number pi by 2 here it is plus pi by 2 here it is minus pi by 2 it comes in the negative wave now here it comes in the positive wave ipl and ccl remember this okay so so this was about what capacitive circuit here we have declared that the current leads voltage by pi by 2 by the phase pi by 2 and the voltage lags behind current by the phase pi by 2 because here omega t plus pi by 2 is there so i is the greater one than v so in the inductive circuit you have studied about one more important point that was inductive reactance inductive reactance we have studied na excel hmm? so that is nothing but what the inductive reactance is the effective oppo effective opposition offered by the inductor it is nothing but an effective opposition offered by the inductor to the flow of current in the circuit the same way in the same way there exist capacitive reactance also so it is also nothing but what the effective opposition offered by the capacitor effective opposition offered by the capacitor to the flow of circuit uh, flow of current in the circuit easier no it is capacitive capacitive reactance is nothing but what it is uh, the effective opposition offered by the 
capacitor to the flow of current in the circuit and already you know what is the factor we got here v naught divided by 1 by c omega so here i naught what is i naught v naught divided by 1 by c omega that is nothing like i is equal to v by r na? it's like v by r so in the place of r we have 1 by c omega so we can conclude that we can conclude that this 1 by c omega is the capacitive reactance it is nothing but x c understood it is nothing but they are nothing but the oppositions na? so oppositions means resistance that will get in in this point only similarly in the inductor also what happened over there we have considered i naught we have considered i naught is equal to v naught divided by l omega so here also at the place of r we had l omega that's why the inductive reactance xl was l omega similarly in the capacitive reactance xc is 1 by c omega so this is the this is the what capacitive reactance and all and also you can think the si unit of capa capacitive reactance is obviously ohm the inductive reactance also having the si unit ohm because they are they are they are oppositions only na? so they are measured in the terms of ohms only okay so this is all about the alternating voltage applied to a capacitor okay now i hope all of you are well well in in the alternating voltage connected to capacitor alternating voltage connected to resistor and alternating voltage connected to a capacitor okay so so you have studied about both alternating current and voltage okay uh, sorry alternating voltage applied to inductor and capacitor so for our thinking i will i, will, I would like to add some more points in that like so what is the behavior of an inductor in the case of dc or ac like means it is it is just a skill it is just a skill you can say so this is one inductor na? how it behaves in alternating current and how it behaves in direct current and one capacitor is there now how it behaves in ac and how it behaves in dc that we have to understand that we have to think depending on our previously gained knowledge okay so what happens what is the value of inductive first we'll think of this sir. what is the value of inductive reactance inductive reactance is, reactance is nothing but xl is equal to l into omega okay l is the inductance and the omega is the angular frequency so can you write it l 2 pi mu mu is nothing but the frequency na? omega is equal always equal to 2 pi mu so for the direct current the frequency will always be the frequency will always be zero in the direct current in any direct current you see the frequency will always be zero so in this inductor xl l omega l2 pi pi becomes zero so the whole result becomes zero na? so here the opposition offered by the inductor to the flow of dc is zero so that's why that's why the dc can flow easily in dc in dc the current can flow easily in the inductor means dc can flow easily in inductor because we have studied the inductive reactance with respect to dc so the direct current can easily flow in the inductor because the opposition is completely zero so what happens to the alternating current so same in the alternating current xl is equal to l omega and it is l into 2 pi mu 
so here mu for the ac is not zero it is some finite number ac frequency is not always zero for your homes you are getting the current in terms of frequencies only this much heard that much heard hertz so that is not any time zero that has some in finite value hence the xl is finite value the inductive reactance has one finite value that means what the opposition to the flow of ac in the inductor is some finite means that means what there exist some opposition in the inductor for the flow of ac so what we can conclude here in the inductor dc current can flow easily but there is an opposition for the flow of ac current understood so this is the this is a some skill which we obtained by our learnt things okay so this is about inductor so what happens in the capacitor see now what happens in the capacitor so for the capacitor also there is a effective opposition effective opposition is there na that is nothing but what xc that is 1 by c omega okay so for the capacitive reactance c is nothing but 2 pi mu write this first okay so for dc first c for direct current what happens mu is 0 1 divided by c into 2 pi mu 0 1 divided by 0 infinity so here there is a infinite opposition for the flow of dc in the capacitor so opposition is very large so dc can't flow understood so so here in this capacitor in the capacitor dc cannot flow whatever however small may be the capacitor is but in that dc cannot flow because we have infinite opposition for the flow of dc in the capacitor okay so what happens to the ac what happens to the ac so here for the ac we have some finite number okay so here 1 divided by c into 2 pi into v mu mu is finite so 1 divided by finite 1 divided by finite means there exists some value na there exists some value means that may be some small value but there exists the value so there is there is small opposition for the flow of ac in the capacitor that's why we can say that the capacitor offers small opposition to the flow of ac in this capacitor so what we can conclude here in the inductor the direct current can flow easily but the ac current cannot flow means it can flow but it is having some finite value means there is a opposition there is the opposition okay so here in the capacitor the direct current cannot flow at all but here a small value of ac can flow because there is a small opposition so this is all about how the behavior of uh, capacitor and inductor is there for the direct current and the alternating current okay so this was about some skill okay last i would like to discuss one more important point that is power power we have studied in the current electricity chapter also na? but here we are studying power supply to a capacitor we are studying what power supply to a capacitor as we are studying about the ac voltage applied to a capacitor under that only we are studying about power supplied to a capacitor okay so the what we, or means in general what will be the power power will always be 
द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ वोल्टेज एंड करेंट मीन्स दैट इज द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ वी एंड आई ऑलवेज ओके सो नाउ इन द कैपेसिटर इन द कैपेसिटिव सर्क्यूट से हियर वॉट वी गॉट फॉर वी एंड आई इन द कैपेसिटिव सर्क्यूट वी गॉट वी एज वी नॉट साइन ओमेगा टी आई एज आई नॉट साइन ओमेगा टी प्लस पाए बाय टू सर क्या ना सब्सटीट्यूट दीज वैल्यूज हियर पी इज इक्वल टू वी इज वॉट वी नॉट साइन ओमेगा टी एंड आई इज इक्वल टू आई नॉट साइन ओमेगा टी प्लस पाए बाय टू ओके सो दिस साइन ओमेगा टी प्लस पाई बाई टू यू कैन ऑलरेडी राइट इट एज कॉस ओमेगा टी ओके सो वी नॉट आई नॉट कॉस ओमेगा टी साइन ओमेगा टी ओके सो बाय द मैथमेटिकल रिलेशंस कैन वी राइट दिस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ कॉस ओमेगा टी एंड साइन ओमेगा टी एज हाफ एंगल फॉर्मूला वन बाय टू साइन टू ओमेगा टी हाफ एंगल फॉर्मूला इज देर ना लाइक कॉस थीटा साइन थीटा इंटू कॉस थीटा इज इक्वल टू वन बाय टू साइन टू थीटा लाइक दैट द प्रोडक्ट ऑफ कॉस ओमेगा टी एंड साइन ओमेगा टी आई एम रिप्लेसिंग बाय द हाफ एंगल वन बाय टू साइन टू ओमेगा टी सो हियर वी नॉट एंड आई नॉट आर स्टेइंग एज इट इज बट देर इज अ चेंज इन these two products that is 1 by 2 sin 2 omega t so can i write it like v not i not divided by 2 sin 2 omega t so this is what the instantaneous power it is instantaneous power of capacitor so can i write it like pc instantaneous power of capacitor so what will be the average power supplied to the capacitor the average power supplied to capacitor means total total power supplied to capacitor means it is the pc pc only the average of the average power is nothing but what average of pc means pc is the instantaneous power supplied to a capacitor so when we take average of all the instantaneous means instantaneous means what like if the wave is like this at this instant at this instant at this 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 like that at means the power at given instant is the instantaneous power so for the average power we have to average all these instantaneous power na so that is nothing but average of pc for full cycle for full cycle like this full cycle one whole cycle like this whole cycle okay so average is nothing but average power is nothing but average of instantaneous power for full cycle and here what will be that average average of pc is nothing but what v not i not divided by 2 sin 2 omega t for full cycle but here this sin 2 omega t is there na the average of sin 2 omega t how you can think that is zero the average of sin 2 omega t for the full cycle is zero that's why the average power supplied to the capacitor is zero for full cycle pc is zero for full cycle because here we have started with the power supplied to a capacitor power is always the product of v and i you know it already so in the capacitor we got the voltage as v not sin omega t and the current as i not sin omega t plus pi by 2 that we can replace by cos omega t because that was just the adjustment of the terms earlier so v not i not cos omega t into sin omega t half angle formula 1 by 2 sin 2 omega t so this is what the instantaneous power we obtained 
instantaneous power supply to the capacitor means at every instant what will be the power of the capacitor so to get the average power of the capacitor we have to average all the instantaneous powers for that average of instantaneous power for full cycle gives us the average power supply to a capacitor understood na? means uh, um, I can give you the example like um, so in in one bag if you are filling rice if you are filling so this is one grain of rice this is one more gra grain of rice two three four so this is what single grain of rice single grain of rice but if you want to know how many grains of the rice are filling this bag so what we have to do we have to combine all this now we have to add all these single grains and fill in the bag so that we can understand the whole rice in the bag like that the single power at at single instants is the instantaneous power so when we add when we take the average of all the single power single instantaneous powers we will get the total power supply to the capacitor that's why we are getting here the average okay so the pc is nothing but v naught i naught divided by 2 sine 2 omega t but the average of sine 2 omega t is 0 that's why the whole thing becomes 0 so the average power supplied to the capacitor for the full cycle is 0 understood so students we are studying about the capacitor here the capacitive circuit and as i told you in the introductory only the capacitor is charging and discharging charging and discharging so how the charging and discharging process will be in the capacitor that we'll study in the next class okay i hope you all are doing good with the concepts of ac try to note down the things purposefully this time i am not giving you the notes i will give you at the end of the chapter so up to that you write down some things by your own okay thank you take care